Hey guys, it's good to be back with you. I hope you're having a great week. You know, I always enjoy coming and spending a few minutes with you and just to share God's love and to share his truth with you, share his word. I really do enjoy that. So I hope you guys are doing well. You know, you only have a couple more weeks before school starts. And that means you got to get your backpacks ready and, and uh, probably get a haircut. You think I need a haircut? Yeah, probably. And uh, maybe get some new school clothes and, and all that kind of stuff. So I know you're going to be working on that uh, probably these next couple of weeks, even though you're only going to go to school about half the time. And the other half, you'll be doing it online at your home, which actually is not too bad. Um, hope you had a great week. I know it's still hot out there, so I know you guys have been swimming and having fun and just enjoying life. And, and so have I. I still spend a lot of time outdoors working on my yard and doing some landscaping and, and all kinds of great things. I just enjoy being outside in God's creation. And, and I'm sure you do too. So we're going to continue in our study about awesome guys in the Bible. And last week we started talking about the most awesome guy in the entire Bible which is Jesus. So last week we talked about how Jesus is uh, has humor, and he's a little funny. He's playful with his disciples. And uh, it just reminds us on how we need to take life a little easy, and maybe even ask God, hey Lord, bring some humor into our life, into our daily life, from a creation or whatever it might be, but just bring some humor in that comes from you. So I thought today we'd spend a few minutes and just talk about uh, another awesome aspect uh, of Jesus, which is his generosity. Did you know that Jesus really is this awesome, generous guy? Now, what's generous mean? Well, if you look in the dictionary, it really says to give more of something than what is expected or necessary. So how is Jesus an awesome guy? Well, he did a lot of awesome things that really were generous. Remember quite a while back we talked about when Jesus turned the water into wine? He was at this wedding and they ran out of wine. And his mom said, do whatever they said to the, to the servants. Whatever Jesus says, go ahead and do that. And in the process, Jesus took about 180 gallons of water and turned it into the most awesome wine, which is about 900 bottles. Now that's pretty awesome. You know, Jesus wasn't stingy with the water that he changed to wine. And remember last week when we talked about um, the disciples and when they went fishing? Remember, remember what happened there? Remember Jesus said, throw your nets on the other side of the boat? And what did the disciples do? They threw their nets on the other side of the boat. And they caught what? 153 fish. Now the Bible says this. In John chapter 21... Let me pull it up here. John 21, verse 11. And Simon Peter climbed aboard and dragged the net ashore, and it was full of large fish, 153. But even with so many, the net was not torn. Now, that's pretty incredible. And that's pretty generous of Jesus, right? These weren't 153 of little, like little minnows. These were 153 of large fish. Jesus was generous. What about the sun? You think Jesus is generous with the sun that he gives us every day? I think he is, right? Without that sun, nothing would grow. We'd be in serious trouble. But Jesus is so generous with the sun and how it brings us life every single day. And what else is Jesus uh, generous with? He's generous with water, isn't he? Water is one of the most precious gifts that Jesus gives us. So what can you do with water? Well, I know you guys are experts on water because you've been swimming, right? All summer. Either you're swimming in your pool or maybe you're floating in your pool. But I know definitely one thing you've been doing, you've been drinking water. And if you went to the beach, maybe you surfed in it. And not only can we swim and float and drink it, but, you know, water also gives us beautiful sounds, doesn't it? Um, how about the sound of rain? Rain has its own beautiful sound to it. And if you ever listen to water flowing through a brook or a stream, that's really awesome, too. And a nice waterfall. That's really beautiful. 
you know, sometimes you go to people's homes and they have little waterfalls in their, ba uh, in, their uh, in their backyard, in a pond, okay? And one of the nice things also about listening to water is when it snows. Does snow have its own sound? Maybe a little teeny bit. You know, there's not much sound to it, but you can still hear it. But Jesus is always generous with water because he knows we need it. And if you think about it, what about the feeding of the 5,000? Remember the story? All these people followed Jesus. They were hungry. So Jesus set them down in sort of a pasture kind of a hillside. And he said, you know, do we have any food with us? And they had five loaves, five barley loaves and two fish. And Jesus blessed it and broke it and he gave it to the people. And the Bible tells us it was only 5,000 men. So chances are there was probably maybe 12,000 people altogether. Maybe there's like um, 5,000 women, maybe 2,000 children. We really don't know. But Jesus was generous with them because they all ate until they were absolutely full. And then the Bible tells us that there was 12 basketfuls of food left over. You know, Jesus was so, so generous in what he did. But really, one of the most important things about what Jesus did was he gave of himself. He gave of himself constantly, right? And you think, well, how did Jesus give of himself? Well, even when Jesus was really, really tired, he would still talk to large crowds of people. He healed many people. Many people were blind, or maybe they had leprosy and he healed them. Or he cast out evil spirits. Right? He even raised people from the dead. Jesus constantly gave of himself, even when he was tired. He was a man. He gets tired like all of us do. But it's a reminder that as generous as Jesus was with creation and with his time here on earth, in healing people and spending time with people, he's a really, really good example of how we need to be generous with our time as well. Now, how can we be generous with our time? Well, we can spend time with people and just, instead of just spending time with ourselves. A lot of people get lonely, and they need other people to help them and encourage them. And I'm sure even with everybody being um, somewhat uh, um, trapped in their houses, so to speak, during this whole COVID-19 uh, scenario we're in, you know, you can call somebody or maybe go to their home and spend some time with them because they're probably lonely. They might need encouragement. One of your buddies from school. So you can go spend your time with them. Sometimes you can spend your ener your money or your energy with them. That's what God wants us to do. Some people are in real need and we can take our money and try and help them out. Sometimes it's creativity just helping them. Maybe you go help somebody work on their lawn or around the house. They just need some help. But God wants us to be generous with our time. And you know, we can also be generous with our time toward Jesus. Spending time with him and talking with him. Spending time on his word and praying with him and to him. That's what Jesus really wants. Jesus loves spending time with each one of us. Just like you spend time with one of your friends. The more time you spend with them, the more you get to know them. And the more than you know about them. And it's the same thing with Jesus. The more we spend time with him, the more we get to know him. And the more we get to know him, the more we love him. You know, Jesus was just, he was really generous with his time with his heavenly father, right? He spent a lot of time in prayer talking to his heavenly father. And that's a, a, an example for each one of us to spend time with Jesus in prayer. So let me just encourage you, be generous with your time, maybe your money, your energy toward other people. And be generous in your time toward Jesus and spend time with him. He really would love that. I hope you guys have a great week. Mr. Zach and I love you. And we look forward to talking with you on Sunday during our Zoom meeting. 
You guys have a great week. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.